Name me three famous female singers in five seconds. Celine Dion, Beyonce, Lady Gaga. Be three movies in five seconds. Um, yo. I don't know. What to... <laughs> Done. <laughs> I don't watch movies. Three school supplies in five seconds. It's, oh. Pen, pencil, eraser. Boom. Thank you, really. <laughs> Gents, we are back with another one. It is I, Rudy Samuel, and today I'm out here with my boy Homole Munkwana. He is part of the Amalgamation Boys. If you don't know them, you're gonna know them by the end of this episode. He's an author, he's a student, and he's just an all round good guy. Homole welcome to my show. Thank yeah, you man. so much for coming through. Thanks for having me. Guys, this guy, he's not just an intellectual, but he's also a very cool guy, and we're gonna just dive straight into it. Tell us about yourself first and foremost before we, you know, move on. Yeah, so basically, yeah, I'm a, an author, self-published author, uh, musician, um, somewhat a comedian to a certain extent, although I don't think I'm funny. <laughs> yeah, um, and I'm a master's student at the University of Johannesburg. And uh, what are you studying? Um, I'm doing operations management. We were in the same class for about two by years. By the way. Yeah, by <laughs> the way. So, um, yeah. So I have you on my show today because I want to speak to you about two things. Your book... Sure. And what you guys did to South Africa yeah. in, I think it was, I don't know when, March, April, whenever yeah, it was. Yeah, it was March. In March. March. Yeah. You guys changed the game. Ivana. Right now, we are in Woolworths yeah, and uh, we are going outside the exit of <laughs> Woolworths. <laughs> right, my daughter. I am fit. What thing puts a man to say Woolworths? But, that's a man's and about any power. But, that's a man's yeah, Yo, but you know what I'm talking about. Some James Wall. This is amazing. That is amazing. This is amazing. I can't believe this. Oh, it's a long I can't time. It. This water is exquisite. Mean, it's exquisite, <laughs> man. Listen to that articulation. Out of the DJ world, what voice. metamorphosis? Yes, yes. Photosynthesis. Put, put some emphasis on it, man. Amalgamate. 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 Diction and articulation. You know what I'm talking about. It's voice. very important. It's a lot. The key components of communication. <laughs> yes. To keep it going. Keep, keep it flying. Like, like the water. <laughs> Can you explain to us the whole story from when you guys were in the store until you guys were on every news outlet, newspaper, social media page, everything? Yeah, so <laughs> basically what happened was that one morning, um, yeah, we just got up. It was a Sunday, I remember. And these guys asked me to say, no, can you please uh, cook lunch? Because I'm basically like the foodie and the chef in the whole group, you know. <laughs> so they're like, nah, let's go out and get some groceries. And uh, the closest place where you can buy groceries in that student environment where I'm in is at Eastgate. Well, it's the safest. So uh, we headed to Eastgate, um, got into Woolies, <laughs> grabbed a trolley, and then, yeah, started packing in some good, you know, ingredients there. Then as we got to the till... The guys saw, there's like water, you know what they do with stores, they put like all the stuff that you definitely going to get, like sweets, chocolates, and then there was water in at front, the, yeah. yeah, just before we got to the till. And um, yeah, they grabbed a couple of bottles of water because they were feeling thirsty. And then before we got to the exit, these guys were like, look, <laughs> there's this thing on Twitter where people are like, no, apparently Woolies Water has these magical things that it does to your voice so let's shoot a video very impromptu one um we don't even have to post it yeah yeah and then that's what we did we took like one shot of the video everyone was drinking the water we started in a very <laughs> yeah very black accent into yeah. a very you know white accent white yeah, accent yeah. you know um and there's no racial connotation attached to that yeah, whatsoever, of course yeah yeah you know? it's just fun and games yeah it's just fun and games ah then we got home we had the whole lunch dinner thing and then um one of our friends q put up the video and I put it up on my Instagram. Uh, literally, we didn't pay attention to our phones until the next morning. <laughs> when, um, I remember DJ Fresh put it up. Yeah. Um, a whole lot of other celebrities yeah, yeah. put it up in the morning. And I was like, yeah, shucks, this video. <laughs> I, that was the first time I had so many views um, on, on my Twitter, on a video. I was like, yeah, no. Nah. It's definitely, yeah, something amazing. We didn't expect that. Yeah, and of course, we didn't imagine, plan for yeah, the whole yeah, video yeah, to yeah. trend. And then all of a sudden, when you wake up in the morning, yeah. you've got like... 10,000 views on it. Later, you've got like 40,000 views on it. It was just, yeah, an amazing experience. For those who don't know, Woolies is actually Woolworths, a South African brand, luxury brand, if you want to say for some. And these guys basically just 
used their water and became famous. So did Woolies do anything for you guys? Did they give you guys money? Did they market you guys? What exactly happened post that video and Instagram and Twitter? Yeah, I think everyone was just like putting pressure on, on Woolies on Twitter, I remember. Yeah, I saw that too, yeah. Instagram And they were like, no, Woolies, if you don't hop onto this train, then you guys are definitely bad people, you know? <laughs> and we were just like, no, for us, it wasn't that deep because we were honestly not expecting to get anything out of it. Yeah, but Woolies did come up with a, a good sum for each of us. Shout out. Yeah, shout just out, as a thank out. you. Um, <laughs> and yeah, they invited us to their head office in Cape Town. That's where we got to meet their ex co yeah, 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 all the top guys in Woolworths, they just wanted to personally say thank you mm-hmm. for... Because they were going through some scandals. I'm sure you guys know yeah, about course, them. Yeah, of course, of course, of yeah. course. Yeah, so that literally helped pull them out of that light, that mm-hmm. bad light that they were in into, like, a good light, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and imagine yeah. having to make water a very trendy thing. That, that, that was one amazing thing for them. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can achieve um, a lot of viewers and stuff with um, promoting alcohol, but with water, it's something... Yeah, it's water. Dog. It's you just open water. The tap and it, and then know, it, it comes, comes out, out, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now, after this whole thing, how has it changed the four of your lives or your life in particular because you're here today? How, what has it done for you social media-wise um, and your gigs and just your life in general? Yeah, I think um, most importantly, um, I've gained like a very positive following you know a lot of people just have a lot of followers but it's people that are just there yeah but i have a more engaged following which is like really nice because when you put up stuff then you can get uh, like good feedback from people you know and it has also opened like a lot of networks for me yeah, in yeah. terms of the people that i've gotten to meet so far um yeah i've, I've met a really a lot of in- influential people mm-hmm. that are assisting me with a lot of the stuff that yeah, i'm yeah. doing right now or some of the stuff that i do have planned which i'm just not going to talk about as soon as yeah, yeah, of you course, know, of course, i get yeah, them yeah. running yeah, 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 yeah but the networks are definitely the best thing that i've taken out of this uh, the whole woolies thing yeah. and i'm really grateful for that you know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and just to quickly now go back like, how did you grow up? Where did you grow up? And how did you find yourself at UJ? And how has your journey been up until right now? Okay. Um, I actually grew up... Um, I don't know if you know where Westbury is. Yeah, they were the Khalids, bro. They were the Khalids. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's literally where I grew up my entire primary school life. Yeah. That's, that's the environment that I was in. Very timid, very shy kid. Mm-hmm. Didn't know a lot of people. But um, from having to move from Bumalanga into Johannesburg, it was a whole new environment yeah. for me. Um, yeah, my parents had just recently moved um, into Johannesburg, so I had a lot of adapting to do, mm-hmm. you know. Um, it was a point where I never spoke so much good English. It, it was, I had to adapt it to a lot chaos, of stuff. It was chaos, yeah. It was chaos, but I finally, yeah, got that right. Um, then I went to Bedford View High School. I don't know, it's in the East Rand. But the South. And yeah, then... from the South to the East Rand. I, I, I told my mom I'd rather travel, sure. you know. And yeah. how was that experience at Bedford View? It, it was high, good. Primary high. Did you go to high school there as well? Um, no, no, no. I would, my primary school was like um, in Westbury. Oh, and then Bedford then High. Bedford yeah, View yeah, High yeah. School was my entire high mm-hmm. school years. Yeah, so it was also just quite a good experience. Very timid kid. I was very good at my academics and stuff like that. I know so that I was spots, yeah. brainy kid, you know. <laughs> yeah. Always doing debate stuff. Never played sports. I d- hated that. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. Yeah. Wow. But, Such a contrast, yeah. Yeah, but it was a really good experience for me because even having to travel using public transport, you just meet a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when I sort of gained my confidence, learned how to, you know, connect with a lot of people. Because mm-hmm. imagine from being a very shy kid and being someone that's just like, yeah, yeah, out there. It's funny that you mentioned shy because when we got to university, I remember in first year, you uh, you basically became the class representative yeah. for, I think we were 200 at that point yeah. in 2015. So... How did that transition come from being so shy to basically being our voice? Because when we had issues and problems with whatever, we'd be like, yo, homo lemo, can you do this? And then you write in the group, okay, guys, this is the way forward. Mm-hmm. And now you're even a tutor to the undergrads and stuff. So how did you transition? How did you change from being that shy guy to that leader, you know? Yeah, I think it takes a lot in terms of knowing how to embrace change, you know. Um, Because a lot of the times, if you fear something, then the only way to sort of overcome that fear is to put yourself in that environment, Mm -hmm. you know. It's like if you don't like swimming, you have to get into the water to learn how to swim, swim, you know. So I had to expose myself to a lot of people, get out of that zone where I was like, no, I know nobody here, nobody wants to be my friend, Mm -hmm. and start actually talking to people, getting used to, you know, being around people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's something that helped me sort of step out of my shell, you know. And I've done that my entire high school life, you know. So it, it at least got me to a platform where I was comfortable being around people, talking to people, and hence the leadership just came naturally. Because mm-hmm. if you're a people's person, then I believe that it becomes a very simple task for you to just mm-hmm. lead people and, you know, talk. Yeah. So yeah. would you say someone is born with leadership or you can learn leadership? I say leadership is something that you can definitely develop. It comes very naturally to other people, but it's something that you can learn. Because mm-hmm. there are certain skills that you just need to, you know, in terms of being a leader. 
you know, like how to address people, there are ways in which you can address people, there are mm-hmm. ways which you're not supposed to address people. So that also takes experience. Yeah. So you can definitely learn how to lead people. Mm-hmm. You don't have to necessarily be yeah. born with it. True, true. Yeah. And in this world of, oh, work for yourself, uh, school is not the only way for success, and you out here doing your masters. And I've had a few people on my past channels where they really said, nah, school really wasn't for me. What would you say to someone who's thinking about going to school or pursuing their dreams or taking business up, for example? What would you say to them? Okay, so I've, I've tried a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I've tried running an events company um, that was doing well, but it's not doing so well at the moment. And then, But school is definitely a place where you can sort of develop your thinking, develop your mindset, make your networks, meet new people. So I, I definitely say to people, if you're in school, stay in school, finish. If you do not like what you're doing in school, maybe change, find something that you like, but it's good to at least get a tertiary education. Okay. There's a big difference from the kind of education that you'll get in high school or yes. in primary and the education that you get in tertiary. Because that's definitely where you make your network. Some of the people that you meet today are people that are going to be your business partner yeah, yeah, yeah. in the next 10, 20 years. You that's know? true. So that's true. If you want to learn how to think on a different level, you know, definitely tertiary is the thing to do. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that if you're doing school, do school only. Only, yeah, yeah. yeah. Knock on every door, as many doors as possible, mm-hmm. until you find one that's, you know, open mm-hmm. for you. So you knocked on events and it didn't work. Why? What happened? Because I have people who are in events and, you know, what sort of advice can you give them? Okay, well, for me, it was more of a thing saying that my attention was sort of, um, divided amongst a lot of things mm-hmm. you know, and I just needed to find that one thing so it's something that I've parked to the side for now because when I was giving it a lot of attention it was working pretty yeah, well yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? so that's what I felt sad maybe I just need to do what I need to do get done with school and then focus my entire attention on running the events company because mm-hmm. also I believe in that thing where they say yeah, you can be a master of all th- like a jack of all trades but yeah, a master, master of none, none. That's, 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 you can do a lot of things but mm-hmm. then just learn to find that one thing that you can excel in even just though you master, are yeah, master, having yeah. other yeah. you know it's very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So now, moving on, you, you did something that all of us always dreamt of doing, which is writing a book. What is your book about? How on earth did you say in the morning, this one morning, okay, I'm going to write myself a book and I'm going to publish it. And yeah. just talk to me about everything, with, you know, with regards to your book that we have here called Quotable Quotes. Yeah. A journey of self-introspection and regeneration. So what is it about? Um, so basically, the inspiration and motivation to write this book basically came from a, a friend of mine. Because um, I'm just a person where people naturally come up to me and talk to me about certain things. And Same. I'm not one person I give advice, but my advice never works for me. <laughs> I just say, <Same. laughs> why I don't are you know, like this? <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. But then someone was like to me, like, dude, you're always saying all of these amazing things. Why don't you just put everything up in a book? And for me, I just thought that at that point, maybe it was something too big to achieve. Mm-hmm. And then I sat down with myself one day and I'm put together with the fact that last year I was going through, I was seeing flames. I don't know if 2018 was also just a hectic year for Listen, you as well. Yeah. I don't know how I got through it, but um, thanks, Jesus. I managed to get through yeah, it. So, yeah. yeah, if it wasn't for God, I promise you, I'd, I'd be different level right be now. at the bottom. Yeah, but I think around May and 2018, I sat down with myself and I'm like, okay, this is actually a good idea. Because the idea is not for this book to become a bestseller, but for whomever it is that's gonna yeah. like have this book in their hands it must at least be able to assist them um so it's a book where i've compiled like various types of quotes and i've got just a few quotes that belong to yeah other people mm-hmm, yeah mm-hmm. but most of the quotes that are in the book are motivational quotes which i've written for oh, myself shout out, so man. yeah the reason shout why i've basically yeah yeah the reason why i've basically like uh put to, together the book was for you know most of the times like as as people we always faced with different types of opinions and people having to give different types of advices, yep. you know. But we always get confused with that because your mom says this, your dad, dad says this, sister, uh, your you sister, know, your family, school. your friends. So there's just a lot of false opinions and recommendations that are there in the world. But then that the real voice is that one that's inside of you. Mm-hmm. You'll always know what to do if you listen. I mean, literally, there's no one that knows you better than yourself. Mm-hmm. So, so that's the kind of angle that I'm taking with this book. And that's why I ask whoever purchases the book to say, look, when you're reading the book, get a pen. Get a notebook, read a quote. The first thing that you think about, write it down. How the quote makes you feel, write it down. That process will help you to shut down everything that's in the world and begin to appreciate the fact that you know yourself better than anything. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. If, if, if you need to guide yourself, then it needs to start with you. you know? uh-huh. yeah. So how long did it take for you to write it? And you, know, you said you were self-published. Wasn't that difficult? It, it, sure. I think from May right up to 
August last year, I, I think I was literally done. I, I convinced myself that, you know what, I'm done writing this book. But something was like, no, this is not the right time to actually publish it. Mm-hmm. So I had to go through um, a small journey of self-introspection myself and yeah. just go through everything and read it and make sure that it's relatable. Because mm-hmm. the, the, the point wasn't to write a book and get it published, but to write something that can be as a, like a small guide to someone else. Yeah, you know? yeah. It, it, it was definitely a challenging journey because I remember writing to all sorts of publishers. Yeah, as you should. Getting rejection, saying that, no, this is not material that we'd, we'd like to publish. And I'm thinking that this book is so messy that <laughs> nobody really wants to publish it, you know, no, until I literally found one publisher that was like, no, you know what, this is an amazing piece and I'd like to help you mm-hmm. self-publish this, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So all proceeds, they go to you or do they... Do they go to a charity? And what do you do with the proceeds? Do you reinvest? Is there another book coming out? Like, where to from here with the book in itself? Okay, I'm glad that you asked that question. Um, so all of the proceeds of the book, I'm literally saving that so that I can write another follow-up book. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, that's what my publisher suggested to say, you know what, I think it would be a really great thing for you to do to continue writing books. Because for me, it was the end. I was just like, nope, writing one book and I'm done. Mm-hmm. But I've really developed a passion for writing now. And definitely another book is coming up. And if we make so much money, we're definitely getting involved with charities yeah, yeah, of course. and investing in, in, in literature and reading. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do you think it was an amazing time for what happened with the Amalgamation Boys for you to launch your book? Because you said you waited to launch your book and around August last year. And then I think April, May this year, you then launched your book. So was that an amazing time for you? Do you think so? It, it definitely was because that's when all the attention was drawn onto uh, myself and the rest of the boys. And I was like, no, but this is probably a great time to mm-hmm. publish this book because a lot of people, after having seen the video, they would want to know who are the people behind this video? What do they do? What are their lives yeah, about? Yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, okay, this is probably the perfect time. And this is the time that this book has been waiting for. Mm-hmm. And I made sure that now, I think just, um, three weeks after our video went viral, I made sure that I launched the book as well. And it got, the necessary attention of course as 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 you need and going back you said that you got rejected and rejected and you know we all out here trying to push and we all out here trying to do our thing and what advice can you give you know because the usual is if they say no keep asking but what can you give the human mind which sort of advice can you tell someone no listen if somebody says no keep pushing because you're gonna get that opportunity what can you say Mm. so one of the quotes that i have in the book says that you need to keep on keeping on you know, that's one thing that keeps me going. To say, no matter how good your craft is, you'll always find people that it won't appeal to. Yep. But I always say to people, do your thing until the relevant people come. Because honestly, to succeed at anything in life, you need God and good people. Mm-hmm. And those good people are only going to come after a specific time or at the right time when God has appointed them to come. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if you're going to frustrate yourself thinking that the minute you pop an idea, everyone's going to like it, then you're not the right person to carry greatness or success. You need to understand that there is a time and season for everything. So true. in your hustle, if you're a chef, if you're a musician, this. if you're doing videos, YouTube yeah. videos, push until such a time when yeah. God is ready. Because sometimes he's also preparing to say, okay, this level of success that I'm giving to you is your character at the right place for you to receive such a blessing. You know, So some people fail to understand yeah, that. Yeah, levels, think, new devils. Yeah, and I've seen that with a lot of young people, it says that we like what we call quick fix. Instant gratification. Instant gratification. Instant success. Nothing worthwhile is instant. Mm. Yeah, everything that is worthwhile, you have to work hard for it. You have to put in the time, the sweat, the tears, the energy. And if you're not willing to do that, then honestly, you don't deserve whatever. That's true. I think, you know, our parents and us are very far away in terms of mentality because they grew up with that mentality of things take time. Yeah. But we just want to just push we want the views we want the success i'm pretty sure when people saw your video they wanted to train too because oh no if they can do that so can i but people are forgetting that each person has their own lane and you should stay in your own lane until you know you finish your. and they forget that you don't wake up in the morning and decide to trend you don't wake up in the morning and decide that i'm a billionaire it all takes time and it all takes effort exactly yeah and talking about time what next for you personally and what next for the group as a whole because surely you guys need to keep riding that wave until there's no wave left so What's the plans for you as Homo Lemo and Amalgamation Boys? Yeah, I think personally for myself right now, it's just to make sure that I finish my master's degree. Um, And I'm planning on getting into the media and entertainment space, getting back into modeling. Mm -hmm. I want to start doing radio because that has been my childhood dream. Mm -hmm. But I've always just been like 
and academic so that swayed yeah. me a bit yeah, away yeah, from yeah. Of course, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. but i'm gonna start it's never too late for mm. anything of know? course 100 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so i'm gonna start pursuing that now and then in terms of uh the amalgamation look one thing that we discussed as a group is that we are not going to be pressured by the fact that yo no you need to start making skits we were never skit makers so yeah, yeah. i said to these guys and we advised her to say let's keep the main thing the main thing everyone's in school do school yeah, yeah, yeah. finish that if you want to get into radio do that but don't let this now sway you away from what the main goal was mm -hmm. you know so that's what we're doing right now mm -hmm. the boys are back at school i'm also doing my school stuff yeah, if anything yeah. comes along the way of course if there's a gig then we'll definitely hop onto it yeah, yeah. but we're not going to make skit making now yeah. you know don't some, force where you're I'm not, not gonna, supposed to where be, you're yeah. not supposed to because that's when you're going to now start releasing videos that are not even funny anymore funny I mean, anymore because you you're trying boring, so hard yeah. to be what you're not mm -hmm. you know so yeah I know that was fantastic that was amazing thank you guys so much for watching thank you for tuning in to watch this episode and um, don't forget remember work hard believe in yourself stay in your lane focus on yourself and remember shout out to leone at the back of the camera always <laughs> and thank you very much for watching don't forget to like share subscribe it's your boy really samuel and i am out name me three alcoholic drinks in five seconds yo castle light Ventuk, savannah <laughs> Okay, three red fruits in five seconds. Yo, apples, strawberries, I don't know, pineapples. Pineapples, my friend. <laughs> Did you Pine dye these pineapples in blood or what? <laughs> three TV shows in five seconds. Um, top billing. Um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know.